Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We're headed to New Orleans for the Risen Star. Hey, Brian, this is the best Kentucky Derby prep thus far in 2024. Yeah, Risen yeah. Star has attracted the field of 12, Matt, and it so far this year, and it might be the Kentucky Derby headed into the Kentucky Derby. That's how interesting this field is. Uh, at fairgrounds, there's allowance race led by Nash for a, a bunch of promising three-year-olds. Good maiden races, even promising horse. Older, older dirt, older turf fields. But we're going to focus on the Derby prep, Oaks prep. Let's get right to it, Matt. Let's talk about that Risen Star Stakes. As we mentioned already, what a nice field it is. Twelve, a dozen entered here, going nine furlongs, $400,000 grade two. Could be a grade one in the future. I don't know. I don't, the Risen Star Louisiana Derby lately. Fairgrounds has been getting awfully good horses. Of course, Epicenter was a champion just a couple of years ago taking this route. And uh, there could be another champion in the mist of uh this 12 horse field map let's start from the rail out tizzy indy will be a long shot oh look at the morning line odds 50 to 1 and i guess there's good reason that because last time he was 61 to 1 when he ran fifth beaten 13 and a quarter lengths in the lacan yes and and his uh his maiden breaker which came in his fourth try was for a twenty thousand dollar tag also yeah, Keith DeSormo's uh, broken through with a few long shots over the years, but this one seems a little unlikely. Number two is another long shot, a son of Mendelssohn. His name is Awesome Ruda. Uh, 30 to 1 on the morning line, Matt. Like Tizzy Indy, he only has one win. Uh, um, maybe there's a potential there. But he's coming out of a third, though, an allowance. Six furlongs on the top. Another kind of hard to pick out here. Yeah, but I guess a little bit better than that one horse. Uh, 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 his maiden special weight was a victory by nine lengths at Louisiana Downs. And he was second uh, in the John Lafitte by a neck at Delta Downs. Yeah, there's a, there's a few good races on Awesome Ruta's uh, uh, past performances there, but he'll have to step up. And it's hard to know coming out of that uh, sloppy allowance sprint last time. Now, number three, Matt, is a, uh, a graded stakes winner. Of course, that's Honor Marie. If you like Honor Marie, again, to make it too straight, you'll get some odds in here. It's probably like the fifth choice or so. Honor Marie is the son of Honor Code. He's rallied every time for trainer Whit Beckman. Whit Beckman. And uh, last time was a very nice win, but it came last year at Churchill Downs. Yes, yeah, so he's been off since November, but I think he's been uh... – uh, been training well for Beckman, who uh, has been out on his own for a few years after having been an assistant for both Todd Pletcher and, uh, and, and Chad Brown. So he's used to working with really good horses. Uh, and, and he's one of three horses in this excellent Risen Star field that has a Kentucky Derby Trail victory already. Yeah, there's, there's great at stakes winners all over this field. After we got through the first two horses, Graded stakes winners or horses with a ton of potential. Uh, Honor Marie likes to rally, and he's been good as a two-year-old. All three of his races as a two-year-old were very good coming from off the pace, and it'll be just about three months since his last race, but uh, certainly one of the ones to talk about, as is the next horse, Matt, the number four, and that's Sierra Leone. I think Sierra Leone is a horse who could buy for favorite be the third choice, uh, but I think he will get action being a Chad runner. Tyler Gap leaves up on uh, Saturday for the horse who's only run twice. Uh, he's experienced already. Yeah, well, this one's been well liked since he was a yearling, Brian, and sold for $2.3 million. Uh, um, a nice debut victory uh, 
uh, at Aqueduct, and he stayed at Aqueduct for the Remsen, which is turning out to have had a, one of the best Remsen fields in a long, long time. And and uh, he got towards the back of the field, came flying, uh, Brian, down the stretch, actually got to the lead. So he went from last to the lead, but then got nipped at the wire by a nose. Um, so a very promising finish. Uh Chad sent him to Florida to train and comes and, and now goes to the fairgrounds. So I'm sure he had a lot of hopes for this one. And the blinkers go on. Blinkers go on, Sierra Leone, on, on Saturday. They've son a gun runner, if we haven't mentioned it already. Some people may look at, uh, of giving up the lead in the sh in late stages of the Remsen as a negative, but that was only a second lifetime race. Made a nice move to get to the lead. The the horse that beat him by a nose uh, came back at him on the rail door knock. It's very highly regarded. So Sierra Leone, certainly one of the ones in the Risen Star. Todd Fletcher has two in the field, Matt. Uh, the first one will be Moonlight, a son of Audible. I think both of Fletcher's horses will be somewhat ignored at the windows. But on the other hand, both of them are somewhat interesting. We should say that Moonlight is cross entered in that allowance, that nice allowance race led by Nash that I mentioned earlier either place the allowance the risen star came off maybe the risen star yeah i don't know it, it was interesting to see that cross entry by uh pletcher but uh moonlight has picked up seven derby qualifying points already uh coming from a second place finish in the street sense at churchill downs and he was also in that remsen and finished fourth yeah, he was uh, he was back in the pack a little bit in the Remsen, made uh, past some horses to be fourth, not a, a non-threatening fourth, but on a muddy track. I could see Moonlight being better than that fourth place result in the Remsen. One to watch. Florent Cheroux is aboard the son of Audible, who broke his maiden in his first try on dirt by eight lengths last year. Number six, another interesting, probably long shot, real men violin. Uh, B.J. Hernandez and Kenny Mc peak team up for this son of Mendelssohn, the second son of Mendelssohn we're about to talk about. And of course, they had a nice win on the Derby Trail with Mystic Dan recently. Real Ben Violin uh, ran six times as a two-year-old, Matt. He only won once, but he was in the money six for six. And I think he was getting progressively better at the end of his juvenile season. Yep, absolutely, Brian. He took he needed five tries to break his maiden, but a late developing horse and and uh, McPeak sent him onto the Derby Trail uh, after that maiden breaker in the Kentucky Jockey Club and finished second. He's another one in this field uh, who is uh, making his uh, 2024 debut off of that race. Yeah, and I mentioned that that maiden win. Before he finished a decent second in the, the uh, grade two that was him and track phantom of course hasn't lost since so, real men violin a horse watching here uh number seven is hall of fame matt hall of fame, another uh rich purchase you mentioned sierra leone hall of fame was purchased for one point in as a yearling uh this is a son of gun runner sent to steve asmussen he's only had two starts but uh those two starts make you think he's a good one. By the way, I, I don't think he'll be anywhere near the six to one morning line odds. I think he could even be the favorite in here. Well, we'll have to see. It's going to be an interesting wagering race in that regard. You, his maiden special weight victory, which came in his second try, was by more than 10 lengths, Brian, and earned a speed figure, which basically is at the top of any horse in the field. Yeah, it was actually the same day as the Gun Runner, and that Gun Runner, of course, was won by Track Phantom a little bit faster than the Gun Runner. His first race was a rallying second at Churchill Downs, uh, and uh, he lived up to uh, high expectations last time, as you say, in that big maiden win uh, at uh, uh, Fairgrounds. Now, Matt, he's one of two horses that we've talked about that are going to buy for favoritism in my eyes, Hall of Fame and Sierra Leone. Both of them have had only two starts, big, deep, Tough field for horses who have only had two starts, but both Sierra Leone and Hall of Fame look like very, very good uh, young horses here. Number eight is Catching Freedom, another interesting horse to me. Another horse, I think, who might be a little bit forgotten at the window. I think he's the fourth place in this uh, deep, deep field, and Catching Freedom has done little long, Matt, for 
trainer. His only loss, he had a bunch of trouble. Yeah, and, and another one for Brad Cox that all that already has a victory on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, Catching Freedom was the winner of the uh, of the Smarty Jones and ha- was a f- was a favorite in two starts. Yeah, Catching Freedom was a nice debut winner. Churchill Downs last time he uh, rallied nicely to uh, run away with the Smarty Jones at Oaklawn Park. Horses that have come out of the Smarty Jones already have done pretty well. Catching Freedom, another one to watch in the steep field. Uh, we just talked about Hall of Fame and Catching Freedom. Let's look at the uh, time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. Uh, we have that fast pace button. Uh, it, it burned us a little bit last week because the winner went wire to wire in the Sam F. Davis. Uh, this time it's saying a fast pace again in a 12-horse field. Asmussen horses are very prominent on this early lead with uh, Hall of Fame, the lightly raced maiden winner on top. And uh, of the horses chasing him on this fast pace, according to the time form, U.S. Pace Projector includes his stable mate, the number 11 track phantom, might be set up for horses to rally. And uh, Catching Freedom is one of them. Perhaps Sierra Leone, you see farther back. Honor Marie, they all like to pass horses. So it could be an interesting uh, pace early on in this Risen Star. Yeah, that's certainly true. And throw in the fact that Brian, this race is at a mile and an eighth, and there's only two, there's only two horses in this field that have run at a mile and eighth, and those are the horses coming out of the Remsen Stakes. Yeah, that's that's right. Nine furlongs is that's a little decent for nine furlongs, but uh, of course, in the fairgrounds does it. Uh, it's a pretty long stretch there at the fairground, so uh, it could be tough if this pace isn't for those horses on the whole in stretch. All right, Matt, let's uh, keep going on our list. I said Todd Pletcher has two horses who probably will have some odds. Uh, Cardinal is, is going to be ridden by Flavian Pratt, which in and of itself is interesting. He's 12 to 1 on the morning line. He's another one of those horses, Matt, that comes in lightly raced, hasn't done much r- wrong. Last time he was second by a neck in his uh, first time around two turns, uh, the winner was well-liked, a change of command, but he, he didn't do much last week in the Sam F. Davis. Yeah, that's for sure, and was a, uh, was a debut winner uh, of a maiden special weight for Pletcher, and interestingly in this spot, the blinkers come off. The blinkers come off after showing speed and being game in that uh, narrow loss last time at Gulfstream Park. Uh, I, I'm watching Spites Towns. Uh, we're, we'll only have so many more sons of sons and daughters of the great sire Spites Town, uh, and Cardinal is one of them. Number 10, uh, perhaps another interesting horse, Resilience. Sire is into mischief. Trainer is Bill Mott. Jockey is Johnny V. It took him a, a few races to uh, put it all together, but he did last time at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, it took him, actually took him four tries, Brian, to uh, get that maiden special weight victory. A, a few tries for sure, but uh, moving forward. Number 11 is the horse who probably deserves I feel like Sierra Leone and Hall of Fame are going to get a lot of action at the but track Phantom at two stakes races already at the fairground. Yeah, he certainly deserves to be the favorite looking at the past performance and understandably why he is the favorite in the morning line. Uh, his his win streak includes his maiden special weight win and then two wins on the Kentucky Derby Trail uh, at uh, the fairgrounds already in the Gun Runner and the LeCompte. He's got 30 Derby points. I think that's second only to fierceness, but I do want to point out that both of those victories uh, in the Gun Runner and LeCompte were against very small fields, and now he's going to face a field of 12. Yeah, a field of 12 with uh, certainly more talent than he's ever faced before. Uh, he's just been getting better with each start. He's a very consistent horse. I expect another good performance here. He's won three in a row. Uh, his first two races when he lost were, were good performances. Uh, but you're right. It, it's a much, much deeper talented field he faces here. I also see that 11 post and remember that fast pace button that we saw 
lit up on time form us pace projector so things will be tougher for track phantom this time certainly a horse to use in the exotics uh anywhere from the first or third choice uh, in my eyes and uh every horse in this field will have decent odds uh with many interesting horses even the 12 not even the 12 big long shot but i think this son of b jersey interesting breeding by the way because he's got uh, a real distance on the other side of this breeding and he's a son of an impressive that mile away and that's all he's had and this is probably an impossible spot for BD. might be a horse to for dallas stewart down the road yeah i agree it's you know on top of everything else uh debuting uh at six furlongs having only that race of experience and then drawing all the way outside boy that that just makes it so, so tough to uh, uh expect much in this kind of field yeah yeah agreed matt uh, there, there's that 12 horse field again for the risen star we'll emphasize it one more time this is clearly the best kentucky derby prep we've seen this year and matt and i are both really looking forward to this risen star stake now the female version with uh big kentucky oaks points on the line and and again fairgrounds has been uh, a really good spot for uh phillies to come and do well in the kentucky oaks uh, after prepping uh, in new orleans uh, has also drawn a very good field and, and a pretty wide open field. But instead of 12, we only have seven in here, Matt. But it's still a nice field. There's nobody you can completely throw out. And there's lots of interesting horses coming from different places. So I am also looking forward to this Rachel, Rachel Alexander quite a bit as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a great field, uh, Brian. We got four horses in here with impressive uh, uh, stakes victories already on the on the road to the Kentucky Oaks. And uh, uh, we'll talk more about those victories. All right, let's start from the rail out again, Matt. I have a daughter of Bernard trained by Brad Cox. Brad Cox will be a prime, at least in this race, gender, as he has three, seven. They're all promising, all three of the uh, Brad Cox entries in here. Tarifa is uh, to be ridden by Flavian Pratt. She was a big England last fall match. She won by six lengths. Maybe she hasn't quite lived up to that in their second and third race, but she is coming out of a win over the track. Yep, a nice allowance win at Fairgrounds. Uh, uh, before that, it was a fourth in the... Uh, uh, it, uh, in an allowance at Churchill Downs, uh, uh, not bad, but when you have to compare that to uh, four or five of the other ones in this field, it doesn't quite look as good. Yeah, she'd have to move forward, certainly off that allowance win. But on the other hand, I wouldn't be shocked if she did move forward off that allowance win again over the track. Uh, number two is Panic, Matt. Panic is an interesting filly in that she's a daughter of hard spun. Uh, she's only had two races. One came in May of last year. One came in January, less than a month ago. Uh, they came on a synthetic track at Woodbine, and they came on a sloppy track at Fairgrounds. And they came at distances of four and a half and five and a half furlongs. Now we're going to eight and a half furlongs, the mile 16th grade two, Rachel Alexandra. Uh, talent, speed, but a tough spot. Tough spot for sure, yeah, and and that four and a half furlong distance uh, that you mentioned happened because uh, he won his debut all the way back in May at Woodbine, thus the uh, thus the short sprint distance, and then came back to uh, win an allowance uh, at Fairgrounds, but again it was a sprint. So uh, uh, in the Rachel Alexandra they're going a mile in a 16th. Yeah, yeah, it stretch out for Panic and uh, certainly a tougher field. The number three perfect shot, Matt, Joelle Rosario uh, gets on perfect shot. She might be the longest shot on the board, either her or Panic, I think, in here. The daughter of Gunrunner is trained by Steve Asmussen, and uh, she uh, was a winner of a, a Churchill Downs Maiden last year in her third start, a nice win at Churchill Downs. Last time, though, she was really no match for West Omaha over the track in the Silver Bullet Day stakes. Yep, second in the Silver Bullet Day. So that was, you know, uh, that was a good progression from that maiden special weight. 
but again, where uh, she's finding her way into a very tough field. Uh, but Joe Alvarezario is on board, who seems to be uh, Asmussen's number one rider now. Yeah, yeah, Rosario's uh, uh, been riding a lot for Asmussen. Let's take a look again at that time form use pace trajectory, this time for the Rachel Alexandra mat. And uh, we don't see the fast pace button. We don't see the slow uh, uh, favors horses on the lead button either. So uh, a moderate, uh, a normal pace, if you will, is projected by time form US. It has uh, some of the horses we already talked about, Phoenix coming out of those two sprint races, not surprising as the early leader. And then a bunch of stalkers, including Tarifa, who we've talked about, Perfect Shot, who we talked about, and we're going to talk about Alcatraz in a minute. Uh, there's the number four a little farther back. Her name is Intricate. I'm kind of the uh, Brendan Walsh trained daughter of Gun Runner. What I saw last year in her last is she got beat in her debut in Winnekeen, Lee Stakes win at Churchill Downs. Yes, absolutely. Got that maiden special weight win in her second try at Keeneland and then was a winner of the Golden Rod, a grade two stakes, impressively by more than five lengths. Yeah, it was an impressive performance, a good looking filly, a good looking performance uh, like Honor Marie, Matt, that came in late November. So we're going on almost three months for Intricate. It'll be interesting. Uh, how she uh, comes out. She's been working well for Walsh, but uh, off the layoff, we'll need to see if Intricate carries over the momentum she had as a juvenile into uh, into this season. All right, the number five, I said, is one of the horses who could be relatively close to uh, a pretty normal looking pace here in the uh, mile and 16th, Rachel Alexander. Her name is Alpine Princess Matt, and she is a filly who's done little wrong in five career starts, and she's coming off a bit of a winning streak herself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 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 after ru after running seventh in the uh, Alcibiades, uh, uh, she's come along and got a nice allowance win at Churchill Downs, and then most recently won the Untappable at Fairgrounds. So, Brad Cox, here's another one of those uh, uh, three-year-old fillies that has a nice victory trying to get to the Oaks. Yeah, Alpine Prince, uh, a little bit like Track Fam in that she's uh, she's won at Churchill, she's won at Fairgrounds, she's won two in a row. Churchill Downs Maiden came over some decent fillies, and then uh, she was clearly bad. Interesting that Cox were almost two months on that win in the untoppable. The daughter of Classic to consider here, as is the number six, Onyx Matoli. Uh, really showed some uh, talent last year. She won her maiden big. She she won a stakes race, the Pocahontas at Churchill Downs big as well. Uh, she was beaten in her last two, but I guess there are excuses in those last two. Yeah, I mean she ran into she ran into some really good uh, horses. This is another one that's coming off uh, a pretty long layoff from October for uh, Kenny McPeak, but that debut victory was in May at Churchill Downs, uh, um, uh, third in the in the Rags to Riches, a second in the Alcibiades, and then that nice win in the Pocahontas by almost nine lengths. Yeah, the Pocahontas was impressive, and the second in the uh, grade one Alcibiades was was pretty impressive. That was a big, deep field as well. Good performance there. The third, where she was beaten uh, over nine lengths last time in the Rags to Riches, was a sloppy track that she might not have cared for. She's a filly who does like to come off the pace a little bit. Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez, again, uh, teaming up on this one. And finally, we get to the last. Brad Cox entrance, the third of seven, and again, another filly with a big shot here. This is a daughter of West Coast. This is a Gary and Mary West homebred, Matt, and West Omaha. She's been, uh, I them. she got put up to second in her debut performance, but her record shows two seconds out of four career starts. Yeah, the other second was in the untappable. That was behind uh, Alpine Princess, Princess, of course. But then a nice win in the Silver Bullet Day to prep for this one. Yeah, it's interesting because Alpine Princess handled her uh, two starts back for her, West Omaha. Alpine Princess has not run since. West Omaha came back with a five-length win 
uh, last time in that silver bullet day. So it'll be interesting to see how much West Omaha has moved forward compared to Alpine Princess, who beat her in, in the untappable back in December. All right, Matt, uh, two nice fields. One's a big field. One's a, uh, a, a seven-horse field, but uh, both a lot of potential winners, good fields. Uh, by the way, Matt, the Risen Star and the Rachel Alexandra, two Preakness winners, two of my favorite all-time horses, two wonderful, wonderful horses. Risen Star in the 80s. Uh, of course, Rachel Alexandra less than 20 years ago. Boy, going on 20 years already for Rachel Alexandra, that's uh, kind of crazy for me to say, but two of my absolute fi favorite horses and two wonderful horses that these races are named after. Just my two cents. Uh, All right. I think, I think that's worth more than two cents, Brian. You're right. It's at least three or four cents. Hey, Matt, let's, uh, let's go to our top picks for these two races. Again, a wonderful card at Saturday at Fairgrounds, but these are the two races that we wanted to highlight. I'm going to let you go first with that tough 12 horse field in the risen star. Good luck, partner. Thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah, that this 12 horse field, it's going to be interesting to see who ends up with the, with the, as the favorite in here, but I am going to go with Sierra Leone uh, uh, with uh, his late uh, running style. I am hoping that Sierra Leone will maybe have the last move coming down that long stretch, but the best move. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Sierra Leone, uh, said well, well liked before he ever ran a race. He's in the Chad Brown barn. I, I like his Remsen quite a bit where he made that big move and maybe he flattened out a tiny bit. But it was his second start going nine furlongs in the mud at Aqueduct, for heaven's sake. So Sierra Leone, I think, could be any kind. And he is certainly a horse who can rally. I'm looking actually for horses that rally a little bit here. I think that is an advantage with speed outside and, and a fast pace projected and a big field. Uh, I, I think there is a horse that can rally and win this race. Sierra Leone was a horse I considered quite a bit, but I ended up on catching Freedom, who I think will have a little bit better odds. I like his progression. Uh, he's already been in traffic. He was uh, the uh, um, comment in DRF and his only loss was stymied. He was completely blocked off in the race he got beat. The other two races, he rallied impressively to win. Like I said, horses are coming out of that Smarty Jones last time and running well, and he was the best in there. So I think he could do it again coming over from Oakland for trainer Brad Cox. It's been done before. The Rachel Alexander Mount, another interesting race. Seven Phillies in this one. Who you got? Brian, for me, it was very hard to separate those four horses that have those stakes victories that we talked about. So I'm going the one going with the one that has the highest odds on the morning line. That's West Omaha at nine to two for Brad Cox. Uh, I like that yeah. recent victory in the Silver Bullet Day. Yeah, nine to two on the morning line. I'm a little surprised that she's nine to two on the morning line. Interesting to see how this race turns out, how it's bet. Uh, intricate for me. I, I'm high on it. I always worry of the year. Maybe I worry even more when it's a three year old making her first start of the year, but I was so enamored by Intricate in her maiden race at Keeneland and then her goldenrod win at Churchill last time, working well for trainer Brendan Walsh. Uh, I think she's got a big shot here, but uh, yeah, your pick, another one. Wouldn't surprise me at all, West Omaha. Um, with intricate, there we go, folks. Uh, I think we'll be seeing a lot of these horses. There's 19 horses. I think we'll see a handful of these horses uh, uh, in the Kentucky Derby and or the Kentucky Oaks uh, in a few months, Matt. Uh, let me get a party shot from you, my friend. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Uh, this risen star is is so impressive. And I agree with what you said earlier in the in the. Uh, uh, in the show, I feel like this horse, this race is grade one quality already with, you know, Mandaloon and, and Gunrunner as past recent past winners of the race. Anyway, uh, lots of good action here. I want to thank everybody for watching Horse Center every week. We really appreciate it. Oh, we do. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed uh, to the Horse Racing Nation channel on YouTube, please do it for us. It helps Matt and I out. Turn on your notifications and leave us a comment. We also should thank our friend Candace, the great Candace Curtis in the home office there, downtown Louisville for the, the race graphics. Derby Wars, our sponsor, our best contest. Of course, Time Form US for those pace projections. 
really looking forward to the Risen Star, as well as the Rachel Alexander and three, four, or five other races on this card, Matt. I, I wish you well. I wish everyone well uh, on this big. We'll be back next. We'll be uh, to uh, Arkansas maybe next week, Matt, on the Kentucky Derby. Until next, we'll see you then.